front spring, I'm just gonna replace the shock and then I'm not gonna use that big spacer. Um, and I am gonna sand these up and paint them gold as well. So I'll show you guys when this is disassembled. placing these I kept the uh, bottom spacer thing to uh, set the coil straight and then I did have these uh, leveling blocks so I don't think I'm gonna use them anymore um, but the bolts that are on here are still somewhere on the truck I believe and then these were in the little holes and these are gonna I'm gonna reuse I'm pretty sure and they're in pretty good shape so make sure you don't lose those I just screwed them on there and uh, yeah here's both disassembled I'm gonna sand these down and paint them and then reuse that part that uh, this part, this part, and the spring, and assemble it with the new shock. I don't know what I'm gonna do with those two uh, leveling blocks. I might sell them to some friends or something. Um, but yeah, there you go. Next thing I'm gonna do is install the springs that we painted for the front onto the new. Uh, shock or strut whatever you want to call it and that's why i painted these black i don't think it'll look bad it'll be black gray and then everything else on there is going to be gold and i'm going to use the same compression tool and you're going to make sure to reuse that little block at the bottom because the inside spins and i don't want to clamp onto that because then i'll damage it and uh, what I have to do is I got to buy a go-through socket, which is like a, a ratchet like this with a, that has a hole through the middle so you can put another ratchet through. So I need an 18 going over the big bolt right there and then this small 8 mil to hold it and I could tighten it and that way it'll compress. Um, well, not compress, but to get this so it won't be uh, super loose. Uh, so I'm going to go to the store, get that real quick, and I'll show you guys. All right guys, so I got the tool that I was telling you and surprise, surprise, the highest in millimeter they go is 17, but luckily they have an 11 16, which is just short, but, uh, or just small, um, but it should be able to hold it in place. See, it barely wants to go in. Um, so what you do here is you put this in your ratchet. If I could do this with one hand. And then, uh, and then you go ahead and put your bolt in and now you see how I could see straight through and then I hold this one while with my small quarter inch I hold the top one and then I could ratchet it if that makes any sense right here so hopefully that makes sense all right guys so there it is on the shock it's nice and tight nothing's moving around and uh, I don't know if you could see but there are some threads exposed now as a as of compared to earlier where it was only at the very top um, so I'm gonna go ahead, do the other one, and then we gotta install them. All right, so here are the old ones and compared to the new ones, and obviously these don't have the springs. Um, but the biggest difference is, well, besides these being a lot newer, is uh, the the spring on the old setup sat right here, and these are leveled, and the, the springs on the new setup sit right here, which is where that six inch lift comes from on the struts. So they sit up a lot taller, and uh, I mean they should be a lot better than these old oem ones not saying the oem ones are bad they're just old so hopefully we see a right improvement okay so it came with these uh cutting templates for the driver's side the rear cross member mount so i'm gonna go ahead cut these out and then tape them on there and i want to say you're supposed to cut along this line all right so this is the front side uh, or at least looking at from the front side and i just used the gold sharpie that Look pretty good. I should just sharpie the whole bottom of my truck. Um, and then this is the back side. And then at the top, I just um, connected both sides. So I'm probably just gonna use a grinder and uh, grind this, and then the back side, and then the top piece. And I'll show you guys when that is done. Hey boy. All right guys, so I just cut that. 
And now I'm gonna go ahead and grind this down so it's smooth and then sand, uh, paint it with spray paint so it doesn't rust. bushings already and then I got two uh, hubs for the front two wheels with the ABS wire because the old ones were just all rusted and uh, one of the ABS wires broke off and I'm gonna put new knuckles on so I might as well put new hubs and then uh, those are the new control arms the lower ones in case I can't pop in these bushings or pop out and pop in these so I'll just use those to transfer these three bolts um, to the new knuckle and since I'm gonna replace the hub that's basically all I need is the three bolts and this dust cap so I'll take that off with on both of them and I'll transfer them along with the new hub to the new knuckles and I'll show you guys when everything's ready. And then we should be able to literally throw everything back on. I got the new control arms, um, the springs, the back control arm, the lower control arm, the front strut, and the tie rods in the front and the back, and the sway links, or I'm not even too sure what you call it, but I'll show you guys right now. So right here on the diff, which is this one and it goes like that and then i'm gonna put four of these bolts that it came with with the washers and then i am applying i didn't show you guys but i'm applying thread lock to all of the all of the other bolts too those and those just so nothing comes loose so i'm gonna apply some thread lock put these in the original slots and uh yeah so let's see when that's done bam so those are in uh, make sure you guys put it in gear so this thing doesn't spin when you guys try to torque these down and uh, Put thread lock on these for sure because there is a lot of this is always moving so you don't want these to vibrate out um, So next is gonna be put the cross members on here. So uh, And this is cleared so I guess we're good here. This was why we cut the uh, cross member right here So the diff would clear so we're good there. So next thing is to bring the uh, The cross member Okay, so I got the skip plate on with four bolts. These front two have washers in the back and I put thread lock. And then these back two um, just thread into the cross member. It already has a bolt welded on. So yeah, now on to the next step. so I got my torque wrench here and we got the knuckles back here 
and I actually had the dust cap removed uh, backwards. I actually had the dust cap on backwards, so it has to be um, kind of the, I don't know if you guys could tell, but it's got the sink in forward so that the rotor can actually sit up. And then uh, I had these, this line backwards, I had it pointing down instead of up. So I got that fixed and these are just snug down by hand. And uh, I'm gonna set my torque wrench to 120, torque these down. Okay, one thing to note guys, um, make sure the lower control arms and the upper ones are placed correctly. They do have a side. So this one, obviously it's a giveaway because the tie rod is there. Um, or not that, but the tie rod goes here and there's the bottom one. Um, so you see how this side's long and this side's short. On top, if you see closely, this side's pretty short and this one's long. And uh, I just happened to get these look er, right on the first time. I looked it up to make sure, but um, that way the, the bolt to line straight because then it would be a little off and uh, that'd be a waste of time. So make sure that they're set up properly. If you have a different vehicle, then I guess look it up. But yeah, make sure the right side is on the right side. Took off the bolt and then I did a slice, just one. And then with some pliers, I bent that forward uh, just to get this uh, brake light out basically, or brake line out. And then there's gonna be the spacer here. I believe it's one of these. And this goes, this goes like that. And then you insert the new brake line and then the bolt. So I'm gonna bend that back and hit it with some, uh, right there where I cut. And on the bottom, I'm gonna hit it with some spray paint. I got somewhere right there. Uh, and then do the same to the other side and I'll show you guys when it's done. All right guys, so this is how it should look. This one came out a little quirk. It should be a little straighter, but it's all right. Um, so you use uh, the three quarter inch long bolt at the bottom and you insert the brake line here. And then you use the stock bolt at the bottom cause this one's got it threaded. And then you use the provided one inch on top. And you kind of have to bend the brake line a little so it adjusts to the regular or to the new spot, but everything should work. And then I just spray paint um, on every open or exposed metal. one to the control arm the ball joint button. and um, I got the tire or the link tightened as well um, I got this jacked up while I tightened this so it would be in its like natural riding position now I just got to tighten those back ones for the control arm and then I think we could put the uh, rotor and the caliper and then plug in this new one and uh, follow the line and uh, take off the old one Put the bigger wheels and tires on it should raise it about another inch so i'll show you guys well i guess we'll finish tomorrow and then show you guys how this looks in the day all right guys this is the track bar i'm throwing on there is the same one i'm gonna go ahead and clean it with the wire brush and give it a quick paint just so it doesn't look bad until i get a new one okay so i got this side completely done actually i lied i'm missing the track bar um but almost completely done so basically I have the caliper back on here, just uh, I was hanging it up here just so it wouldn't get in the way. Um, I got the spring in, it looks a little bent, I don't know if you guys could see like a banana shape and I think that's just because the car is like not fully, or the truck's not fully sitting right. So hopefully when that sits down I'll check it make sure it's all good. I have the shocks in, um, I didn't realize it but it came with new bolts for the back which have like a triangle shape. So it's like the bolt and then it has like a triangle plate here. So it hits on both sides. So I don't have to use that uh, broken ratchet anymore. So it makes it a lot easier to take off and put on. Um, and then I have the upper control arm, um, brand new as well. Reuse those bolts. And I'm gonna get a new lower control arm just because, I mean, it looks ugly. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if I'll paint it this color or black, but I'll for sure paint it. And um, I got this track bar extender put on. So this is the original bolt. This is just paint because of uh, 
I'm gonna paint this all black, like wherever it got chipped, but so ignore that. This is the original bolt, or actually I'm lying, this goes through the original hole, but this is one of the uh, given bolts. I had to drill this hole, as well as this one, and this one, and then put a nut uh, on the other underside, and then grab that on. And then I got the links in the back put on, as well as this little extender for the uh, brake line. This brake line cut a while ago, so that's why it looks a little weird. Um, and the other side looks exactly the same, except without this track bar thing. So let me get the track bar on and uh, see if we could lift this up and put the wheels back on. All right, guys, I got the track bar on there. I did try to paint it, but with all the vibrations, some of the rust fell off again. So I'll give everything a paint later on. Um, but yeah, both of them did align pretty good. So that means everything's pretty straight. So I'm gonna try to lift this up and put the back wheels on and see what else, see what else we're missing. All right guys, there it is. So there's the back tire on, the front is on. Um, I mean, it looks pretty level to me. The back maybe look a little bigger, just maybe a tad bit. I have to take it out so you guys could see it from uh, an angle. I didn't put the wheel liners or wheel wells back on. Um, man, is this tall. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is, since this is in my garage, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw these wheel liners in the uh, trunk here and uh, clean up most of the area, um, double check everything. I did have some missing bolts that I didn't get to use somewhere around here, but I'm gonna go ahead and double check everything. It did have some parts where you could use these instead of the OEM ones, but I think I ended up using the OEM ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and double check, make sure everything's tight nothing's up loose or i didn't miss any and once i have that i'm gonna try to pull the truck out and uh, see how it drives i'll give you guys a cold start update this is maybe a hundred miles in or less and i had some clicking on the when i would hit a bump and first i thought it was the front suspension because i mean i'm not a mechanic but i took everything apart i checked everything uh and everything seemed fine up here so what i did was i opened this door and i had my dad jump on there because every time it, it bounced i heard something and we actually located the sound back here and i couldn't tell exactly what it was at first but if you guys pay close attention, and because I painted the back control arms, there's my friend bouncing on it. You could see the bushing is actually coming out of the control arm. Let me, let me see if I can set up the light. So this is where the bushing was originally set because I did paint these, so that's the reason that I could see. And as you guys could see, I mean, this is rubbing on the bracket. So I called them up, and even up there, all four of them, and I called them up and they said this is a common issue and they're gonna send me some brackets, I guess, to lift lift this up a little. And they told me to use the stock control arms. I don't know why they don't just send the control arms or the brackets with it, um, if this is a, an issue, but they said they're gonna refund the new control arms. Um, I still have the stock one, so I'm probably just gonna ask for the refund and not really buy the after or a new ones. But this is kind of sucks because I did spend money and painted these. Kind of dirty right now, but yeah. So now I'm gonna have to wait for them to send it back. And the lucky thing is that these are pretty simple to remove, but that is kind of kind of bad. Look, we already got the spring chipping. But yeah, guys, so if you guys are doing this, call right away and just ask for the brackets so you don't gotta wait. All right guys, so I'm here trying to put on this relocation bracket for the upper control arm and man, oh man, is it harder than the paperwork seems, all right? So let me go ahead and show you. All right, so the bracket itself is pretty simple. I'll show you guys a little more in depth on the other side. You basically take off the control arm. Let me hold the light. You take off the control arm and then uh, you slide this bracket over. You throw in an extra bolt where the original one was and then you got the control arm and then it's held down by one, two screws there, and then it's gonna have another one screw here and then one on the other side. The problem is that it doesn't line up. It's a whole one and a half inches off. So I called and I told them cause I tried jacking the truck up from here and everything. And 
They told me I'm gonna have to drop this whole differential or the whole axle down. So I'm gonna have to lift it up, put it on jacks, take off the tires, drop the axle, and then pray to God that that thing lines up. So now it's like 40 minute job, 30 minute job turned into like a two, two hour job, at least for me, two, three hour job. Because now I have to do all this extra work for something so simple when they could just send me these from the beginning and told me not to use the aftermarket ones that they sent me over there. So I'll get back to you guys when I got this lifted and the axle dropped. All right guys, so I got the truck jacked up. It is the next day I ran out of sunlight yesterday. I got the front frame on jack stands pretty high and then uh, took off the caliper so I wouldn't stress uh, the brake lines. And I literally have this jack all the way at the bottom. Um, the only reason I have it on there still is just so it won't fall, but it finally seems like it's lining up. If I could get it back in there, there we go. So the only bad thing is um, I should have bought new ones of these so I didn't have to do this again. So I'm hoping once I put this in, if I ever want to swap it out, it'll be as easy. I mean, these aren't in bad condition. They're just a little rusty, so I'll probably just paint them. But I mean, this is so much extra work if they would have just sent the right pieces from the beginning. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, bolt those in, and hopefully it doesn't affect anything. I'm guessing it's gonna be a little higher of a ride quality or in the back. I'm not too sure. I'll let you guys know if I find anything out. Um, so I guess we'll see. There it is guys, finally complete. I did forget to uh, mention, Let's see if you guys can see, I put the bolts on the sides. Um, well, I mentioned it, I just didn't show you guys. These on the sides right here. So there's one there and then one on the other side. A better look. So I have to measure this, but I mean, I don't know if you guys could tell, it does look a little bit shorter in the front. That's how it was before too. So I'm gonna have to throw in the leveling kit um, back on the front. I'll do that in another episode. But yeah, we're finally done with the with the lift. It took a couple days. I did get some bad news, like this scratch from the fender flares. Um, couldn't use the painted upper control arm in the back, but I'm gonna go take it for a ride, make sure everything runs good. But I guess that's it for this video. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be doing the leveling kit as well as the wheels. They're getting powder coated right now. And then just a whole bunch of stuff. I gotta finish the sound system that I have back here that I haven't even finished. So, I mean, stay tuned.